Now, there are only two days to go to Colombia's presidential elections, where the country will elect the next president and vice president of the nation or the two main contenders in a possible second round. To step right into the matter, we now receive author and Latin American expert Yvonne Tellez. Welcome, Yvonne. Hi, thank you very much for the invitation. Hi, so let's jump into the matter. There are several aspects that come to play in this election. That's to say social crisis, violence against social leaders, economic losses, and the recent acknowledging of the false positives scandal by former military officers. How do these issues, how could these issues influence on the political shift here in the, in the, on behalf of a specific candidate? Well, I think never before have Colombians been this open to giving the far left an opportunity to govern. I think it's possible that we can see Petro as the country's first leftist president in one of the most politically conservative countries in Latin America. I think uh, there, there's, there's, there's issues that you mentioned before um, have propelled a biggest, a very loudest, um, possibly a very angriest youth electorate in Colombia's history. We're talking about approximately 9 million voters that are uh, younger than 30 years old, and they represent a quarter of the electorate. So that means that probably they are energized not just by, by Petro's image and the resistance that he, that he poses towards the establishment, but also by his running mate, by, by Francia Marquez, because she, of course, uh, what she represents being a, a, a engendering, raising, class conscious uh, means that uh, we could have a different option. In the sense, also, uh, I think one of, uh, of the biggest announcements that Petro has, has made, uh, and that's the recent announcement of the former prosecutor to the before the Supreme Court of Justice as a possible leader for the anti-corruption mission, could mean uh, like um, a break uh, from the, the, the establishment right now in order to attack uh, attacked, I mean, slightly uh, the issues and the aspects that you have uh, mentioned before. Yeah, that's uh, kind of what I wanted to ask you next. The prelude to these elections is not a favorable one. As we know, there have been direct threats against the Petro Marquez formula, which is also the favorite according to several surveys on vote intention. What can we expect from Colombian institutions and other bodies governed by a political elite that is openly against a possible Petro administration? I think it's it's very important to say that uh, maybe in, in other scenarios, in other countries, or per, perhaps in safer countries, a laser does not imply a serious threat. For example, what happened before and last Saturday with Francia Marquez shows the, the heated atmosphere and the, and the violent atmosphere that we are experiencing in Colombia before this first presidential round. I think um, this uh, we, we cannot derive from the, the, the violence as a continuing force and a mechanism for electoral competition. What could be, what could be expected if electoral enters to office? Well, he's gonna definitely probably have a hands tied by some of the political structures in Colombia, as well as some economic realities. We can also see that he could also be constrained by a highly fragmented Congress, because even if his coalition is one of the biggest, uh, uh, the, the, um, the other parties still represent a big force in this sense. So uh, probably what we can see is that, um, and, and also the government, the, the budget of the, of the government depend highly upon oil extraction and foreign investment. And, and foreign investment. That means that some of the proposals of, of, of Petro uh, regarding his campaign could be or could face some constraints within the Colombian um, uh, political structures. Right. Last but not least, depending on who wins, there are different expectations for Colombia's future. But what about the region? How could this outcome influence the region? Well, I think uh, there are many changes that we could foresee. First, uh, I think the, the Washington war's relations with Bogota could change. Uh, that means that we uh, can date back to decades of a strong um, interconnected uh, cooperation and that means that some of them could be uh, could change also because um, 
Petro has, has announced that he wishes to renegotiate Colombia's free trade agreement with U the U.S. Also, uh, for example, he's, he wants to restore diplomatic ties with Venezuela. So the, and, and, and another issue that's very important is that if uh, left in, in Colombia wins, and probably if it's as expected, Lula in Brazil wins as well, that means that some of the most uh, populous nations in Latin America, say Brazil, Mexico, uh, Chile, Colombia, Argentina, Peru, and uh, Venezuela, uh, will be under a uh, left-wing rule. So that means that the the, the system and, and the relationships are going to move, and also considering that Colombia has been one of the most conservative societies, politically talking. So that means that some of the relations are going to move, but in the same sense, the, talking about a, a left wing that is um, predominant right now in the, in, the, in the region could mean that there's some uh, new alignments. Thank you so much, Yvonne. We were talking to author and Latin American expert Yvonne Tellez regarding Sunday's presidential elections in Colombia. We will offer more details in further news brief. Stay with us.